Hi, I'm Colleen Ferrari. I'm the president and CEO of Insight CEO and Small Business USA. Hey, I'm so happy to have you here today. And, and some of you are about to watch or have already watched our SC Expert call with Sergio Samel. And, and I love him and he spends a lot of time on the call talking about people alignment and how to get the right person in the right place and taking the emotion out of it. So if you're having people challenges, make sure you watch that video next. Today though, um, there's some statistics that we found that I really wanted to add to the conversation today that we didn't get time to. So I thought I'd do a really quick presentation on some of the new engagement statistics that came out this year. So um, let's, let's go through them. He, one of the first statistics that came out this year, Grant Thornton um, Women in Business Report came out, and it showed that, unfortunately, the number of women in management, senior management roles has not improved. It's kind of stayed the same, and, and sadly enough, in some of the largest companies, it is actually the worst and the and uh, the more affluent countries the worst. So one of the pieces I just wanted to bring this slide up for and and I and I you know I've kind of have a lean in philosophy. I've led some really big teams and the truth is women don't ask for what they they don't ask as much as men ask for more money or for more position. They don't negotiate as well. So come on ladies, get out there and ask more. If ask for more if you want to earn, you know, that 8% gap, get out there and ask for it. Um, but Really, I think one of the important statistics here is that you need to make sure that your leadership environment especially matches your customer, matches your population. People need and companies need that diversity of thought. And I think that applies in so many places, not just women, but race, culture, sexuality. I think we have to be a melting pot so we have a diverse thought processes going into what we're creating. And I also believe it's important for engagement because teams need to see that they have the ability to advance. And if you don't think, if you're, and I, if I've had a lot of leaders that work for me were, were great middle-aged white guys who said, well, they, of course they do. Sometimes they have a better opportunity because of their sexuality or race or whatever gender. Here's the thing. They don't believe it. Women still see the boys club. There's a great example of it. We need to help show senior management as a reflection of our entire company. The other result that came out that prompted this slide and conversation was a Gallup poll about engagement. So engagement isn't improving that much. And I think that's one of these places that we need to pay attention. So engagement, 34% to you means that you may think that your 10 employees are happy, but you're about to lose seven of them. When somebody bigger, shinier, flashier or offers them more, invites them to leave, they're leaving. And then what will you do? So let's talk about engagement trends in 2016. I want to go through this list really quick and talk about some quick things that you can do to leverage this for your business, whether you have one employee or many. Um, I think here's some important stuff to talk about. So engagement is going to increase. People and businesses are focusing more on engagement and making people happy. They see the result, 202% increases in productivity, increases in sales. It's all about how happy your team is and how happy they are working for you. Millennials are still providing a challenge. And this year, millennials slipped to the top. They are now the largest population in our workforce and it's only gonna get bigger, you guys. So here's an important, some important things to ask yourself if you're really responding to this giant population and up and coming population. Do you have open communication in your company? If somebody is not happy, are there politics? Do they have to maneuver through the politics? Do they feel comfortable sharing? And I am telling you, you're sitting at the top. If you're watching this and you're sitting up at the top of your, in your tower, like many of us do, myself included, we want to believe the best. You won't know until you survey up. So if you don't know that answer and you haven't done a survey, you should. Great company culture is another one. Really easy to see from the top down is positive, but when you look under the hood, 
there's a lot of stuff that people are going to keep from you. They did a study, I, I've shared this way too many times, but a study was done last year with 40,000 Americans. And of those 40,000 Americans who really liked their boss, 93% of them would not tell their boss the truth. So get with it. <laughs> more compassionate. Oh, more. Um, I'm sorry, back to the millennials really quick. Um, great company culture, open communication, not something you can honestly assess. You need to bring in a consultant or do surveys. The other thing is, does your employee have purpose? And they need to know. And, and the best way to do that is go and ask them, why are you here? What are you doing? And when you watch Sergio's um, video after, you know, he does, he tells a great story about JFK. So pay attention to that on that, on that purpose piece. Philanthropy is your company contributing to the culture? Let ask yourself this, Bernie Sanders, why did he have such a huge millennial following? He was a socialist. He was an admitted socialist. Millennials care. They care about the community. They think that we are responsible for taking care of them, maybe because their parents took care of them and they want to take care of the next generation, whatever it is. If your company is not concerned about the environment, people, the community, you're going to have some challenges keeping them engaged. Okay, number three, more compassionate leadership. You know what? If you have ever said, hey, listen, they get paid or they need to step up their game or I don't care what they're angry about, they need to do their job you have a problem. If somebody called in sick, I want you to think about the last sick call you took. And if you haven't taken any sick calls or you haven't sent anybody home because they're not feeling well, shame on you. But when you take a sick call, what did you tell them? Did you make them feel good about it? Did you make them feel guilty? Did you mention the work that isn't done or maybe they could work extra later in the week to make it up? You're not a compassionate leader. Hey, compassionate leader, people, quit their bosses. You need to remember that. They quit because of you. So be authentic, be present, act with dignity, lead with integrity, hold others accountable. That's a huge one. Why am I working so hard when so-and-so isn't asked to work as hard? All of that is compassionate leadership. Employees want more feedback more often. And I am telling you guys, you get more with honey than you do with vinegar. I can talk about that for an entire day. There's a recent study in 2014 that showed that giving you need to give feedback. You need to tell them when they're doing something wrong, but it is not going to drive the result as much as positive feedback. I promise you there's a study in 2014 done that, that completely um, substantiates that data and it's a huge difference. So lead positively, my friends. Work-life balance becomes work-life integration. It used to be, hey, you work from nine to five and you do whatever else. I don't want you to work when you're home. Things, they have a change. People are working from bed. They're waking up in the morning on their phones. They can't sleep. They're working in the middle of the night. They're night people. You have to be able to give your employees the flexibility for work-life integration. It's important. It's a trend. And if you're not doing it, you're going to get noticed for all the wrong reasons. And I think that we need to do that too. We need to recognize that there are way if we need to do what we love and there's ways to integrate what we love into what we do. I think networking golf is a great example of that. You know, meet people on the golf course, do what you love, but make great relationships that are going to build your business. And then people, technology. Everywhere, you guys, there are companies that are creating departments based on people analytics. There's surveys. That, there's more and more that come out all the time. If we can scroll through all the nonsense in the interview process and use a survey to hire the right person quicker, that's what we're doing. But also, on the other side, once they're hired, are we, are we asking the right questions to make sure they're engaged, to see what motivates them, to see what they need? The future is feedback tools, feedback apps, anonymous social networks. I mean, we see that with Glassdoor. If you're not checking Glassdoor on a regular basis, you're missing a big opportunity. Chances are, if you have more than five employees, you're on Glassdoor. So check it out. Be involved with technology as much as you are with social and internet and, and watching what your customer feedback is. It will pay off in the end. So, hey, thank you so much for joining me. 
Again, it's Colleen Farrar. I hope these trends helped you and kind of propel you into the future and make you think about what does it mean to lead your team in the back half of 2016. Some of these results are surprising, staggering, and also um, disappointing. But I think staying ahead of the trends is going to keep you ahead of your competition as well. I am Colleen Ferrari. You can reach me at Colleen at smallbusinessus.com. Visit our websites at insightceo.com. That's for larger businesses. It's the CEO Roundtable. And uh, we also offer marketing. That's our big differentiator to help companies um, drive their sales teams and lead their sales teams more effectively. And then Small Business USA really is a business development company that gives you a complete program to navigate through how to bring your business to the next level, how to grow your business, and just we've ha having wild success with our peer advisory boards and our program. So check out our website. Um, we're really proud of what we're doing and proud of our results and really excited to bring this to you and enjoy the conversation with Sergu. I appreciate your time today. Have a great day. Here's to your success.